Welcome back to another race day vlog. I'm gonna go ahead and apologize for the lack of lighting because I am heading back down to Lexington. Uh, I just I just came back from Florence. I tried to do this beforehand. Fun fact, for any future reference, um, I am always running late. Like I, I can leave 30 minutes early for something and I will still somehow be late. So that is just a common theme for me. I tried to do this on the way up and I failed very epically. Anyway, so um, as a little bit of a pre-race analysis, I guess. Um, so if you remember her last time out, she was second and she ran a very good race. But if I also remember correctly, it was her first time at that lower level. So uh, for those of you who don't really understand, racing has levels kind of the same way that a lot of other disciplines have. If you think with barrel racing, you have the 1D, the 2D, the 3D, the 4D type of horse, right? She essentially is a 4D, 5D type horse. Like she's not gonna be winning those big, those big checks, right? She's gonna be kinda at the bottom and she might pull a check at the bottom every once in a while, right? Or if you if you like do something like eventing, she's she's more of like a beginner, beginner novice, novice, kind of just go with the flow type horse. She's gonna teach you the ways of the land. She's not gonna go out there going Mach 10 at five star, you know? So if, if, if I hope that kind of gives a little bit of an idea. I don't know. So she was kind of at like the bottom-ish of the barrel last time out, but she ran a very good race. I didn't think necessarily it was a good enough race to bump her back up in class to where she had been running. Um, Cause before her second place, I mean, she was running like mid pack, end of pack, and they weren't necessarily the best races. Some of it may have been, hey, maybe we just need a jockey change or hey, it wasn't really her fault or the jockey's fault. They just kind of got locked in or got a bad trip or this or that, you know. So um, I was a little surprised when I got the entry form and I looked to see that we bumped her back up the class level. Uh, oh, text message. So anyway, but we also stretched her back out from a mile to a mile 16th. It's really hard to be completely honest, to find longer races. Um, a lot of races, especially in America here, are, tend to be geared towards sprinters, so shorter distance horses compared to routers, which is the longer distance, and she is hands down a router. So anyway, we bumped her back up in class, one of my 16th, and so it, to be completely honest, I wasn't necessarily expecting like fireworks. My big thing, I was like, well, I just hope she has a good trip. You know, that was my big thing. And also looking at it, like it was a pretty tough field for for, for like the condition for the class and all, all that stuff. There were some horses in there that like, you know, they were notable, they were notable horses from like a level up that were just dropping down a level. We were moving up. So like I was, I definitely wasn't expecting anything crazy. I, I, but yeah, I, honestly, I was there for quite a while. So I, Peach, Peach ran at the, end of the night so she, I think she was like the second to last race so it was really nice and dark unfortunately which is the worst time to try to get photos and videos by the way um but my dad also had a horse running in the very first race and then I you know those people who are like you're you're kind of friends but you're like you're not really friends because like I don't know you're like mutuals on social media and you cheer for them but you like haven't really met them in person too much type thing yeah, um, but I, I, knew, I had two of those. One of them was in one race and she ended up scratching last minute and the other one was in another race and they ended up having, they, they didn't have like the cleanest break, but they ended up closing really well for a, a really close fourth. They were almost third, but they ended up fourth. And my dad's horse, I don't really know what happened there <laughs> to be completely honest. Um, he kind of drifted the filly coming out into the turn and I don't really think that helped her confidence too well because she, I, I think he was trying, I actually understand what he was trying to do. I think he was trying to get her to engage a little more, be competitive and grit down um, against the filly next to her. And she just wasn't really having it. She was kind of just like, no thanks. So I think that's what that was. Anyway, but yeah, let's, let's we're, we're mostly focused on Peach. That's honestly, I think the most video I got anyway. So let's go see how that race did and let's talk about it and yeah but anyway let's go
Bears. Lucky lesson to the outside. Ready for the late daily double. And there they go. Pello drops part of the front line. Collect a Lil wants to show pace. Vogelsang is there and laser jet. Four of them vie for this top spot. Jenny Lynn, the favorite, is fifth along the inside with three coins. Racing with her is awesome and a lucky lesson to the extreme outside. And the early trailer is in a peach. Collect a Lil, utilizing her inside draw. She's the quickest from Vogel Zang. Pillow Drop is third. Laser Jet has the fourth spot. A little less than four lengths off the lead. American Anna is three deep, and Lucky Lesson is stuck out there in La La Land. Four deep entering that backstretch run. Jenny Lind bides her time with her rail positioning. She's a little less than five from the pace. Three coins covers her. In a peach is the last of all. Seven lengths from first to last. Collect a Lil and Vogel Sanger, one, two. And American Anna is creeping a little closer in the clear from third. Pillow drops back to the fourth position. Laser Jet makes a move for that spot. She has a little more than three and a half to find heading into the turn. They're going to lucky lesson three coins. Jenny Lind is second last. She's still along the inside. She's a good five and a half for six off the pace at the three eights. And a peach has trailed throughout. It's collect the Lil. American Anna makes her move. Vogelsang has been discouraged. Three coins begins a bit into third. And here comes Jenny Lind, guided into the clear, and she is gradually gaining on the leaders. In the meantime, Laser Jet decides to try to assume a spot up the inside. Here comes Jenny Lind. And Jenny Lind is up to the front at the eighth pole. American Anna second. Laser Jet is third. And a peach from a long ways out of it tries to rally into a minor placing. But it's all about Jenny Lind and you know who, the Axeman, Luan. Machado. Our leading jockey does it again. What a sensational 2024 Turfway Park season for the Axeman. So it is Jenny Lynn from American Anna. Third and fourth will be determined between Laser Jet and in a page. All right, you watch the play out. Let's talk about it. Again, we are the seven. She breaks pretty well here, and we're good for these first couple strides. Then you see she's going to get a little pinched and she's going to get squeezed out of that spot. She's going to have to take a bit back. This is the first time that this jockey has been on this horse and the instructions were to kind of keep her closer to the pace. And then if you have to close, keep her to the outside. Well, coming around the first turn, you can see that uh, we, we are not very close to the pace. And she's going to vibe in the very back uh, pretty much for this entire race. As you can see, there's a lot of distance between her and the one horse. Now, I do say I was there all day. The track was kind of favoring horses that were coming like directly off the pace. Honestly, there's not a whole lot to talk about until we get to the turn. She's still vibing there in the very back. And you'll see occasionally she'll get like a little bit closer to the pack. And then the pack pulls away from her again. This is a mile and 16th. So it is a full lap around the track and then a little bit more. Which means we have a long way to go. And we're just going to keep vibing last. Just just vibing back there. I do say, I'm at least glad that this time, if we were going to be coming from last, uh, the pace was not turtle, turtle speed. It was a bit more regular speed. Because that does mean that there's at least a little something to run into. Anyway, we're finally getting around that final turn. As you can see, completely not in the picture. Keep an eye on the far outside. Nah, now you kind of see her. She's kind of coming up on the outside. She's still last, still last. There's also a really big wall of horses to go around, so they do a great job in keeping her to the outside, which is away from traffic. So Jockey's in all the white, and she's on the far outside. You can see she finally starts getting there, starts closing. No one's going to catch the favorite, who is the winner. But she made up a whole lot of ground, honestly, a little bit quicker than she normally does. Like I said, she's a big filly. Takes a while to get her going. But she just got nosed out for third place, so she was fourth. So yeah, that's just kind of how it went overall. I was pretty pleased with her. Now, like I said, I found out the jockey instructions like the following day. Um, so like, but granted, I feel like I am a little bit more lenient, especially when it's a new jockey or first time jockey or something of that nature, just because look i've been there i never was a jockey but i did exercise ride for several years and you know i ride in other disciplines sometimes the game plan just goes out the window the first few seconds and you you gotta do what you gotta do she like granted it probably would have benefited if she could could have tried and kept her closer to the pace but overall i was at least proud that she made that the that like she was able to get the horse to make the effort for a, a solid closing kick and she kept her to the outside and out of traffic trouble and all that jazz so anyway 
Uh, like I said, Turfway is closing for the winter soon. So I'm not entirely sure where we're headed next. More than likely Belterra. Um, Belterra is kind of where it, it tends to be where she does really well. So I, I'm sure that is probably where we're going to take her. Now, the interesting thing is with the synthetic track, synthetic technically plays a lot like a turf course, so the grass course. Um, but if you remember her race back in Indiana, we had talked that we more than likely weren't gonna run her on the turf anymore because she really struggled with get, keeping traction around the turns on the turf course. So uh, there, there are new rules in the horse racing that kind of went into effect not too long ago and one of them was in regards of horseshoes and so she like if we were able to put the clips back on it wouldn't probably it probably wouldn't have been that big of a deal but obviously we can't so um she's she, you know it's just it's a thing so she handled belterra's turf course pretty well so i wouldn't be overly surprised if we actually take her back to the turf at belterra um, or at least maybe give it a chance once or twice. If not, we'll just stick to the dirt. We pro she probably won't be at the turf on Indiana. She'll probably stick to the dirt if she goes to Indiana. Um, but yeah. So, anyway. I have plants to repot because I went on a plant buying spree. And I got pizza to eat and hair to fix. Because my po I have been struggling. I Listen, I always do my hair at home. And I've never ever struggled so much with trying to get a color as I have trying to do this light pink. Oh my God, let me freaking tell you, it has been a nightmare to deal with. I'm gonna kill her. I'm gonna chop off all my hair if I can't get it out at, at this round. Not really, I'll probably just go get it professionally fixed, but it's a little frustrating. Anyway, so uh, until next time.